Hi, I'm Blake, founder and lead developer here at the 3D Avatar Store. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create an avatar with our newly updated interfaces. Uh, we've updated the interfaces here because we have new, smarter neural nets, whereas previously we had our system trained on about 70,000 scans of real people. Now our latest software has 300,000 real people behind our software. So um, let's walk through the process. So of course the first thing you want to do is upload a facial photo. You want the photo to be similar to this one here of Nancy where the face is featured. The face is straight on looking right at the camera. There's no facial expression. The reason you want it to be like this is it will give us the maximum amount of information pixel-wise for your skin texture as well as no expression means there won't be any smile lines or other detail that is the cause of your expression getting baked into your texture. You don't want that. So select your photo, make sure it's composed like a passport photo really and then you've got a couple selections here you can select between male and female all that's going to do is allow the website to offer you digital makeup or things that are appropriate for your gender uh, the age is somewhat critical selecting teen or older is specifying that the subject is post puberty selecting child means that the subject is pre puberty why this matters is because during puberty a person's skull shape changes. So if you're post-puberty you want to use the adult skull shape. And uh, this last selection is legal right to use the photo. What that basically falls into is if you're going to be taking these avatars out of the website and posting them in public then you need legal right to use the photo which the avatar was created. If you're going to just be using this for private projects, you're teaching yourself animation, you're learning how to do computer graphics, knock yourself out. Make avatars of anybody. So, I've got legal right to use my own photo. So now at this point, the photo is being sent to our neural nets and it is having the new 300,000 person strong facial feature finder run on it. And as you can see, it did a really freaking good job. No human interaction right here. And we can zoom in and we can see it did a pretty good job. But now we want to animate this. So it needs to be a little bit better. The shape of my jaw is a little more square. So I'll just pull that out. As you can see, you can just click right on these markers and make corrections. Now, key places to make corrections are in the lips, and specifically where this portion that I'm modifying right here is. This is where the lips break, where they split, and you really want that to be correct, especially if you're going to be doing any type of lip sync animation, because if they don't split correctly then the lip sync fails and now I'm just you know correcting the shape of my lips a little bit I've got fat lips so that's okay and it did a pretty good job on my nose and now the other critical spot is the eyelids it tends to do a pretty good job even with the newest software but eyelids getting exact accuracy is always difficult and in the eyelids when your character is looking around when the eyes blink if there's any iris on the eyelid or there's any eyelid on the eyeball that doesn't look right it basically f makes the lip sync fail so with these minor corrections I did just now now my character should look pretty good. So hitting this button here is going to uh, generate a 3D reconstruction for the first time. 
So here we go. And uh, in a moment, okay, we're back. And it'll load the 3D, and there we go. Okay, so zoom back a little bit. Not too bad. Uh, there's other controls that we can have that are coming up in a moment, but here we can have a look to see, okay, could be a slight correction there on the shape of my chin or the shape of my jawline. Now, in general, for these lines that you see me moving, the way these guys work is when you mouse <clears throat> near it, <clears throat> it's going to grow. And when, you, when it grows, you can drag it. That also allows you to basically move near it, let it grow, and then you can move slightly away from the handle and it still operates. So that way the mouse isn't blocking your view of what you're doing. You can see me correcting some of these points. Now over here, there's curvature that I can't really represent. So I try to do the best that I can. And that'll that will do a pretty good job right there. Likewise with the eyes. You know, so where you can't represent curvature, try to do the best you can. And this looks pretty good. And so at this point, I have, I'm pretty confident that I can accept and move forward. I can also at this point start over with a different photograph. Now, there's also some situations where the auto face finder will find like a face in the background or if you have curly hair it may actually find a face in the curls of your hair that isn't your face but you know it actually mathematically has a face pattern and that was contrast wise stronger than the face than your actual face the subject's face when that situation occurs you can click this button here and it will take you to an older interface that we have that basically reruns the face finder but now you've told the software where the center of the eyes are and that will typically correct that situation but okay so here we're basically satisfied with this 2D to 3D registration so now I'm going to move forward past this. If I've made any annotation changes here, they're going to be reflected when I get to the next screen. And we'll just hang on a second. This is all running in real time, so I'm not editing this video. And uh, here we have our 3D detailing interface. And uh, this loading pause. I wish it was faster. That's caused by the YouTube video. If I take the YouTube video out, the page loads much faster, but uh, then some people who don't listen to instructions won't know what to do when they get to the screen. So let the YouTube video finish initializing. And there we are. Okay, so here we have my character and it's a fairly realistic representation of me and if I go here we can see there's various profile adjustments that can be made now I'm a male in my mid to late 40s so as you can see the skin beneath my eyebrows has slightly collapsed and that's not represented in my avatar. So the easiest way to correct that is over here it's with the Asian eyelids detail bar. So you see as I slide that in and out, you see what that's doing to the folds of my eyelids? It's labeled Asian eyelids, but what it's really doing is it's just it's filling out this flesh under the eyelid. And likewise, some other detailing, smile lines. I've got strong smile lines. You can see that line right here moving in and out as I impress my smile lines. And I've also got a very slight chin cleft. It kind of came out, but I like to think it's stronger, so I'll just make my chin cleft a little bit stronger. 
I know, I'm kind of fond of my chin clef. And uh, well, I'm an older guy, so let's get some of these profile things correct. Uh, my nose is actually bigger, and it's bigger about like that and about like that. My chin is not as strong, so I'll pull it in. And I actually have kind of a high forehead, so pull that out. And uh, because I can, because I'm that kind of a person, I'll give myself slightly higher cheekbones than I really have. I like it that way. And because I work too much, I have tired eyes. So let's uh, reflect really the way I look. That's actually fairly correct for my overworked face. And that's actually a fairly realistic representation of me. And there's this other control over here, distortions, which is kind of fun. If you want, you can give yourself the giant mad scientist look. And uh, oftentimes, when people submit photos or people take photographs, they do a selfie photo. And when you do a selfie photo, you get perspective distortion that makes your nose appear giant and this, your ears fold back. Well, this control here will often compensate for that quite a bit. So be aware that that's available. But in general, now, I'm pretty satisfied with this fairly realistic look for my avatar. Now, also, additionally, on this interface, if you want, you can upload a profile a side view as a reference that can be useful and uh, so now I'm gonna save and bake save and bake is taking these 3d shape modifications and making them permanent on my avatar and now one of the final steps is selecting my eye color although that's fairly accurate eye color for what I actually have I like to pretend that I have a a slightly sparkly eyes, so I'll give myself a slightly more golden brown. And that will load up in just a second. And there is pretty much a finished avatar. It looks fairly realistic. I can now go to the avatar home, and I can then visit my wardrobe and I can do modified lighting, and there's actually quite a bit of things you can do at this point. But that's for another video.